The theme for this series of talks is Countdown to a Better Future, an opportunity to discuss ways that we can create a different, safer, greener future. And I want to suggest that nature can help us get there. Nature can help us build that better future. It wants to help us. It just needs us to understand and to support it. And one area of nature in particular offers us more solutions than any other. But before we begin, I just want you to imagine your favourite natural habitat. It could be somewhere that you visit regularly or somewhere that you've just seen pictures of or videos of and you're just drawn to. Picture it in your mind. Now I'm going to guess that you are thinking about somewhere like a forest, a woodland, a wildflower meadow, maybe a tropical rainforest or even the deep ocean. What I'm going to reckon you're not thinking about is a bog, a swamp, a mire. And I don't actually blame you for not thinking about those habitats because throughout history, we have not just overlooked these habitats, we've actively demonized them. But these bogs, these swamps, these mires, these wetland habitats, they hold the key to helping us reach that better future. And they can present answers to some of the most pressing environmental problems we are facing from climate change to microplastic pollution. And this makes them the superheroes of the natural world. Now, I may be a little bit biased because I am actually a wetland scientist from Bangor University, so I get to spend my time studying these fantastic habitats. But I want to share with you just a few reasons why wetlands are so great, so that the next time somebody asks you what your favourite habitat is, you will think of a wetland. So let's define though what a wetland is, because it's actually quite a complicated process and there are lots of different definitions out there. But really, what a wetland is, is a border zone. It's a, a zone between a truly terrestrial land-based habitat and a truly aquatic or marine habitat. It's this squishy, soggy bit in between. Not quite land and not quite water. In fact, it's been said that to work or move around in a wetland, you can't use a pair of shoes, your feet will get wet. You can't use a boat, there's not enough standing water. What you need is a decent pair of wellies. And wetlands are found throughout the world. There's coastal wetlands, inland wetlands, there's marshes, mangroves, swamps. But here, Wimbury Moss, where we have a Sphingmoor, which is a special type of floating wetland. And they all share, though, a set of key characteristics which sets them apart from all other ecosystems. And it's these characteristics that make them invaluable to us and to all life on Earth. So I am going to give you four reasons why wetlands are the superheroes of the natural world. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to give you five because the first reason is a little bit different to the others because it's actually a little bit of a look back to the past. Because the first reason why wetlands are so great is culture and civilization. Our entire history, in fact, our development as a species is tied up with wetlands. Some of the, mo some of the oldest human remains have been found on or near wetlands, suggesting that we have always relied on them for the abundance of natural resources that we find there. And we still rely on them now. Billions of people still rely on a wetland plant for their staple food, rice. And one of the most commonly used painkillers, aspirin, is derived from a wetland plant, willow. In fact, if you have a headache now and you chew on some willow leaves or some willow bark, it will re reduce the pain. The ancient Egyptians, thought of by many as a desert people, actually owed their success to a wetland, a riparian wetland running adjacent to the river Nile, which produced that rich, fertile land which they needed. The ancient Mayans harnessed the power of wetlands to produce crops in an intensive way to feed their densely populated cities. And settlements along the eastern side of England are, were established by the Romans who used the salt marshes and the fens for the production of salt, which was then shipped around their empire. Wetlands also feature heavily in our culture and our literature, albeit not in very positive ways. Even our language is littered with our negative thinking about wetlands. I'm bogged down with work. I'm swamped today. And how many monsters, boogeymen and evil ne'er-do-wells have their hideouts in mires and moors? 
And how many times do storytellers, both ancient and modern, use bogs and swamps as an artistic shorthand to show that an area is bad and not good? Throughout our, throughout our language, from our earliest English writing, from the poem of Beowulf, right up to DC Comics' latest TV series, The Swamp Thing, wetlands are depicted as sinister, evil, dark places. Nothing further could be from the truth, which leads me neatly onto my second point why wetlands are so great, and that is biodiversity. What do I mean by biodiversity? Well, in this case, I'm thinking about the number and variety of species in any given location. And wetlands are amongst the most biodiverse places on the planet. Take mangroves, for example. Swamps, coastal swamps found along the equator, which have been described as the nurseries of the ocean because so many fish and sea life depend on them during their life cycle. Why do they do this? Well, first of all, they're incredibly productive, providing food for every level of the food chain. And then there's this dense tangle of roots and branches which offer safety and security. And many of the species there have special adaptations to cope with the conditions. Take the mangrove trees themselves, for example. They have mechanisms and processes put in place to cope with the salinity, the saline conditions and the waterlogged conditions. One of the best is the pneumatophores, a special root system which works like a snorkel coming up from the roots through the mud, out through the water, into the air, bringing oxygen down into the plant. And that's just mangroves. There are so many other types of wetlands. We've got our peat swamps, our freshwater swamps, our marshes. These are home to some of the most charismatic animals you can think of, from orangutans and tigers to alligators and eagles. Why are they so biodiverse though? Well, one of the reasons is because they're so productive and they have so many natural resources, but the other is to do with that first fact I told you about wetlands, the fact that they're not quite land and not quite water. They're this magical world in between, this meeting place between two habitats. This is called an ecotone, and it means that you get species which are specially adapted for living in your wetland, but you also get visitors from the land and from the water coming into your wetlands and relying on them for food, resources, and everything else that they need. So that's reason number two. Reason number three why wetlands are so good is cleaning our water. Let's leave wetlands for just a second and think about our kidneys, organs in the body which filter out waste and remove chemicals from our blood, cleaning our blood. Well, wetlands act as the landscape's kidneys because unfortunately many of our waterways, our rivers, have pollutants in them, chemicals in them. And if the water flows through a wetland, those chemicals can be filtered out, removed, broken down by wetlands. They're able to do this because of special relationships between the plants, the soil and the microbes. And wetlands are so good at cleaning our water that we now build artificial wetlands, constructed treatment wetlands, to remove a huge range of different pollutants from excess fertilizers, heavy metals and even pharmaceutical waste. And at Bangor University, we're starting to look whether we can use treatment wetlands to remove microplastics from our water. So reason number three is cleaning our water. Reason number four why wetlands is so, are so great is flood prevention. As we know from our local area here in Nantwich, flooding is becoming an ever-increasing problem. But wetlands can help us here as well. Now this may seem a little counterintuitive because wetlands are well, well wet, but they can. First of all, wetlands along the coast, salt marshes and mangroves, can act as incredibly effective buffers, protecting shorelines from storms and even hurricanes. And then moving inland, wetlands can act as giant sponges, holding on to water and storing water. Wetlands like floodplains, wet meadows and riparian wetlands are especially effective at this. And we see big problems when those types of wetlands are damaged, destroyed or even built on. And in the uplands, wetlands can help to reduce the flow of water when heavy rain hits the hillsides. They slow the speed of water from hitting our rivers, preventing a huge spike in the levels of rivers, which can then burst their banks and flood our homes and businesses. And one wetland animal in particular is especially good at slowing the flow of water, and that is the beaver. 
Now, beavers build their iconic dams, which create these fantastic biodiverse beaver ponds behind them. But the beaver dam is actually quite special because it's actually a leaky dam. It doesn't stop all the water flowing through it, it just holds the bulk of it back. So, when you get a storm event, lots of heavy rain, and a huge volume of water comes crashing through the river system, the leaky dam stops not all of it, but allows a steady stream of water to flow through. If it stopped all of it, it could create flooding further up, but instead it slows the flow, meaning that further downstream, the river stays at a relatively constant level. It doesn't burst its banks and flood those homes and those villages and our towns. And I can't leave um, the conversation about beavers without discussing my favourite story about these wonderful rodents. Now, um, in the late 1940s, early 1950s, in the American state of Idaho, the authorities were getting concerned that there were too many beavers in some areas. So what they decided to do was move some beavers around to more remote locations. And so what they did was they captured their be some beavers and put them in vehicles and then on horses and transported them to the locations they wanted them in. But these journeys were pretty long and very arduous, and unfortunately, some of the beavers died. So, one bright spark came up with the idea of parachuting beavers into the remote locations. And there is a scientific paper all about building the best beaver-friendly parachuting crate for this very purpose. And the whole project was an incredible success. So, there you go, parachuting beavers. And if you thought it couldn't get any better than that, then it does, because I have saved the best to last. Reason number five why wetlands are so good is climate control. Wetlands can control our climate. How do they do this? Well, wetland plants, just like all plants, take in carbon in the form of carbon dioxide through photosynthesis. And then, you, and then a proportion of this carbon gets used to form the plant structures. And when the plants die, usually, they decompose, they rot away, and eventually those plant structures get broken down and the carbon gets released back into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas. It's the carbon cycle. But in a wetland, that decomposition process can be all but stopped. The special waterlogged conditions in some peatlands prevent, prevent plants from decomposing. So that carbon in the plant structures doesn't get broken down and released as a greenhouse gas. Instead, it stays locked up as a sort of semi-decomposed plant goo. Now this plant goo is actually called peat, and it makes up a type of wetland called peatlands, bogs and fens. And peatlands are really giant, inefficient compost heaps, building up slowly, layer after layer, of this semi-decomposed plant material over thousands of years, and storing climate-changing amounts of carbon. And I really do mean that, because our peatlands are actually our most important terrestrial store of carbon. They, they cover just a fraction of the Earth's surface, yet they store at least twice the amount of carbon than is found in all our world's forests. So although there is a big push by many countries at the present time to plant more trees to remove the excess carbon in the atmosphere, if we really want to get serious about reducing our greenhouse gases, then we must get serious about looking after our peatlands. Because once a peatland is destroyed, not only do you release all that carbon that's been stored up in it, but it stops the whole process of that slow storage and locking away of carbon. And for centuries, we have destroyed our peatlands. We've dug them up, we've used them for fuel, we've used them to make compost, we grow our flowers, our petunias, in something that has taken thousands of years to make and holds the key to controlling our climate. Fortunately, there is hope, and many organisations like Natural England, uh, Wildfowl and Wetland Trust, the RSPB and the Wildlife Trusts are understanding the importance of our peatlands and they're looking after them and working out ways that we can better manage and conserve them. And work that we're doing at Bangor University and many other universities are looking at ways that we can restore and revegetate our damaged peatlands. And perhaps, most excitingly of all, at Bangor, we're looking at ways that we can naturally manipulate that decomposition in our peatlands to further suppress it, so that peatlands could store even more carbon.
So there you have it. Five reasons why wetlands should be your favorite habitat the next time somebody asks you. And here in Cheshire East, we are so lucky to have so many fantastic wetland habitats on our doorstep for, for us to explore. Wetlands have shaped civilizations from the most ancient times and they continue to do so. They feed us, they give us medicines and other resources. They are wildlife havens. They clean our water, they prevent flooding and they control our climate. If, as the theme of this CV series of talks states, we want to build a better future, we must look to our wetlands. We must give better protection to our fens, our bogs and our swamps. We must give greater importance to our salt marshes and our mangroves because wetlands truly are the superheroes of the natural world.